Hey everyone, welcome back to Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley, and I have for you good people a Christmas miracle. Yes, that's right. A Christmas miracle because, oh my god, I enjoyed an Elminster book. Yes, that's right. Elminster's Daughter by Ed Greenwood, taking place in the year 1373. I actually dug it. It's... <laughs> so let's see. The book is about Elminster's daughter, Narnarar, who is a, a, a daughter that he didn't know about, but he finds out about. No, 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 wait. It's a story about a conspiracy that's going on in Cormier called the Rightful Conspiracy, I believe. A bunch of nobles planning to upset the balance because of how the Obscure Empire has... No, 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 wait. It's about a red, red wizard, the Thean red wizard takeover of Cormier. No, 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 wait. It's about how Kaladne, the uh, the chick who's taken over since Vangerdahast, Vangerdahast? I have no idea how to say that name, Vangi, since he has relinquished his role as a court magician is doing, and uh, how she treats Elminster during... No, 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 wait. It's about Vangerdahast's secret plans to create a uh, uh, a slave dragon... Empire, which will protect Cormier for all history because of the Devil Dragon attack, which I'm guessing that was part three of that Cormier novel. Uh, uh, I can't even remember what the name of that was, but the ones, uh, the one that Ed did with Troy Denning, what that was all about. It's all of these things and more. <laughs> there were so many characters that during the climax, I literally had sections where I'm like, I know I've read about these characters before, but I have no idea who they are or why I should care or what the hell is going on. But it's it's just it's just nonstop fun, and I assume that it's meant to be. There are some things that frustrate me. Elminster feels untouchable, and that's a little bit weird. But the fact that he takes up so little of the story, as you can tell, the story's about about a billion things. It really feels as if it's kind of a Cormier gazetteer for thirteen seventy three in a lot of ways. There are a bit too many coincidences for my liking, especially toward the end and. Though Ed seems to have gotten away from passive voice as much, he is still big on, uh, uh, what's the word, um, not jargon, but these, these kind of things, you know, instead of way, he says wise, and instead of you, Elminster says ye, I, I guess it's ye, but, I mean, it's like, how are ye? I mean, can, you, you just, you can't even imagine, because so much of the rest of his speech is modern, that jabbing that ye in there whenever he's supposed to be saying you just sounds stupid, right? I mean, you get what I'm saying there? In any case, I, I did overall enjoy this book. It's, it's a fun ride. It's all over the place. Elminster is everything that I wanted him to be from Retur because of Return of the Archwizards, and I assume he has been all along. But because I didn't like Greenwood's style, I never read enough of it to know. You know, like, part of the end is like, I too am a daughter of Elminster. Oh, me. Oh, me as well. Oh, me. And it's like, it really could have been called Elminster's Daughters. Still would have worked out fine. Also, again, just as a continuation of basically all of the threads, I, I, the, the, um, uh, God, what was that? What was it that review called him? Like, you know, Sexy McFlurry Pants. Florin uh, from the uh, uh, from Elminster's other trilogy makes an appearance. People from uh, oh, uh, uh, Mermine Lal from Night Parade makes an appearance. You know of Arabel. Uh, just just everybody is in here at some point or another, and it really feels like you know what it reminded me of. It kind of reminded me of Journey's End, the Doctor Who episode, which is just an absolutely horrible, horrible episode if you pay any attention to it. If you turn down the sound and, like, put on show tunes, it's awesome. You you just realize that it's 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 all spectacle, no, nothing of consequence, no plot, no, you know, nothing like that. It's just like, do, 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 featuring the Bay City Rollers, you know, it's, it's, that's all it is. That's all it's meant to be. It's like that old Alice in Wonderland with, like, John Stamos and Pat Morita. It's a terrible adaptation of Lewis Carroll. It's a horrible story. But as something showcasing the CBS lineup for that year, much like the Star Wars Christmas special, you know, uh, in the same way. It wasn't meant to be anything except like, oh look, uh, B. Arthur is gonna have a show on ABC this, uh, this fall, you know, that, that's all it's meant to be. You don't, it, it's not meant to be like hardcore Star Wars canon, uh, just ignore that, just enjoy the spectacle. That's totally what this felt like. 
I won't say that I'm in the slightest tempted to go back and try to reread the uh, older Elminster, but I am definitely looking forward to the next one. I'm, I'm curious about it, at least, if nothing else. So, yeah. Uh, hey, everybody. High five, right? It's like Greenwood's 15th or so book in the realms, and I actually enjoyed it, and I'm I'm really, really happy to say that, because... I, I, as I have said many times before, I don't go into this to cut down anyone or to not enjoy something. I want to enjoy these books. I love the realms. The other one we're going to look at is uh, part two of House of Serpents, Viper's Kiss by Lisa Smedman. Man, I can't tell you how much I really dig Lisa Smedman. Oh, you know, one last thing about Elminster's Daughter. It's also a chase scene. I swear to God, there's like 50 pages of this stupid book that is a chase scene. And it's like, come on, dude, get get past the... But it, it, even that felt like a, a gazetteer more than anything else. I uh, Sorry to go back here on you, but uh, I, I remember that I did want to talk about this. It, it Just the way that he introduces stuff that really has nothing to do with anything, but it really feels like this is what life in Cormier is like uh, at this point in history. Very odd way to write a book, but it feels completely Greenwood. All right, Viper's Kiss. Can't tell you how much I like Lisa Smedman. She just really brings a fresh sort of taste to not just the realms, but a fantasy trilogy in general. I'm not going to say this has never been done before, but you can tell that House of Serpents was very obviously devised as a trilogy, but it's not like Year of Rogue Dragons. Oh, that's one other thing about Elminster's Daughter. I didn't like that. This is going on during the Year of Rogue Dragons, yet there's this huge dragon subplot in which all the dragons just act naturally and don't talk about the fact that there's apparently the biggest rage ever going on during this time. I mean, even if it had just ended, don't you think that would come up? Don't you think that would make Vengardas plans to involve dragons in any way shape or form maybe have put them on hold or change them somehow because you know obviously he didn't just start doing this two days ago anyway oh sorry that that frustrated the crap out of me i'm really wondering if perhaps this should not have been set in 1373 and i wonder why my list chose to put it there i can't remember if the book actually had a date in it or not and i don't have access to it anymore so who knows in any case loved viper's kiss <laughs> I know I'm kind of all over the place here, but seriously, Elminster's Daughter, the scope is so gigantic. Viper's Kiss, much smaller scope, but very enjoyable. So as I say, the trilogy was obviously envisioned as such, a trilogy, but unlike your Rogue Dragons, it's not one story that takes place over three books so that you just feel like it's nonstop filler. It's, you know now what the plot of book three is going to be. At the end of book one, I wasn't really sure what book two was going to be. And book two starts off as basically uh, a logical progression from book one, but not really anything that you could have guessed because it's 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 kind of like, you know, um, Arvin is, is studying to be a scion under the guy who he starts a little bit to study under in book one, and uh, he's now off on a quest in a different city that, you know, could have just ended up having absolutely nothing to do with book one, and it could have been the start of, like, a series rather than a trilogy. But now at the end of book two, we realize the threads that we've been getting that are all coming together, and he's going up against something that has been there since book one, but it was never really the focus until now. There are a lot of loose ends that are kind of pulled back in, and a lot of um, uh, plot threads that are left dangling, uh, things that I thought worked really well, some tragic stuff. That, you know, since it's the realms, I never want to say, like, you know, dead isn't necessarily dead, and for instance, thrown into the abyss isn't necessarily gone forever. So, uh, just like how in the end of the first one, he, he tricks the chick who put the mind seed into him, he tricks her into thinking that he's that he's dead, and of course, in this book, they see each other again, and so she knows that he's alive, and, you know, things are never permanent in the realms because they are a magical place, right? So... Very curious to see where the third book goes. Very excited to get there. And we're going to take a little break before we get there because we got some other stuff in between, and I'm cool with that. I, I am just digging this series so much. Lisa Smedman has so much respect from for me. From, from me. She might have respect for me. I doubt it, though. I kind of assume she doesn't know who I am. But, you know, if you do have tons of respect for me, Lisa, thank you. So, yeah. Uh, and and again, you know, because I skipped the, uh, the whole... Uh, spin-off trilogy that she did from War of the Spider Queen because I just hated War of the Spider Queen so much that I'm I'm glad 
that uh, these books, and I, I think these are the last things that she did for the realms, though maybe I'm totally missing something, but I'm glad that I'm really enjoying them. So, woo, good to go out on a positive note there. So yeah, Christmas miracles all round. Uh, is there anything else to say about the book that isn't just rehashing the plot? Ioun stones make an appearance, I believe. I, I assume that's what they are, because magical stones circling over somebody's head, uh, which is always fun. Uh, I thought those were just kind of a weird visual that you don't see that much. Psionics, again, taking a, a, a large role, so that's cool. Sex with a snake, human sexual relations, which I thought were only... <laughs> the, the, the only place I thought that happened was in a comic uh, that I had written, um, though I think it's safe to say that snake rape still has only existed in the comic that I've written. Although, I don't know, there's kind of some snake sex coercing going on here. Also, apparently cobras have two penises. That's something that I learned from this. So yeah, there's some odd adult themes in this, I guess. You know, uh, uh, pro tip, if you're into bestiality, good series for you. Um, just saying. Also well written, so that's that's kind of more where I'm focusing. I think that's about all I have to say on that. Yeah. <laughs> really kind of wonder sometimes. Like, late at night, was Lisa, like, cackling over writing this stuff? Or was she like, oh, God, I'm never going to live this down? I don't know. In any case, it totally fits with the story and works and it's great. And uh, there are just some uh, pretty intense uh, scenes in this. Uh, and, and it's just... It's just really good. Like, it's just an enjoyable book. It's it's not it's not necessarily the best thing I've ever read, you know, blah, 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 blah. But it, it's solid. It's solid. She knows what she's doing. She's building something. I'm very excited to see how it all plays out. So next time, I'm thinking maybe some Never's Fall, some Ghostwalker, something like that. Maybe something else, depending on if uh, I get through both of those. We'll see how that goes. I'm uh, I'm I'm very excited. I am glad to be back. In the swing of things here, in the last one, you know, I, I talked about how it was just going to be like, bam, uh, going forward. And of course, I didn't realize that was third in the uh, the series, not fourth. Now I'm going to go ahead and start posting these. So once it hits here, I'm live as to the first one that's being posted here. I think that's going to be episode 36. We'll see. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. This is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered. <laughs>